Hey everyone, thanks for learning to play games. My name is Lance, and today I'm going to take a look at a brand new game on Kickstarter called Tiny Ninja Heroes. It's a new game by Tooniverse. It is a one to two player game that takes roughly 20 to 40 minutes to play. It is a competitive head to head game where each player is going to control a team of, of ninjas trying to defeat their opponent's hero. And the player that does this first will be the winner of the game. In this video, I'm going to be playing through the solo mode that's included, taking my team up against a zombie ninja team that's controlled by the board. And depending upon how many of them I can take out before they can eliminate my ninja hero will determine if I am just a ninja novice or a full-fledged ninja legend. So as always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribing to my channel. I know everybody asks for it, and it's one of the easiest ways you can help support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce new videos. And if you want to stay updated on all my videos, also considering that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll show you what this one's all about. The one other thing I want to mention before moving into the game is that all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are subject to change and will look a lot better in the final production copy. All right, so I have everything set up, and I went ahead and spawned all of my zombie ninjas already, and then I placed out my ninjas in the middle where I wanted them. So at this point, I'm going to take you through the first round, explaining the different steps within that round. And then after that, I'm going to play through the rest of the rounds, but not explain quite as much as, as this first round. So each round is going to start with a spawning roll if any of the enemy ninjas have been eliminated, which currently at this point they have not, as you'll always have all four of the different ninjas out there. The second step is the zombie roll, and this is going to determine which zombie is going to activate and what kind of attack and damage they're going to do. So let me do this. So it is going to be the panda. We're also going to, the black dice is going to determine the fog for this one. So the fog is going to be placed out in these two sections. And then he is going to have a white purple. So purple is always going to be two damage, so of course he rolled really well right off the bat. And then his goal is going to be, or any of the zombies when they attack, is to follow a priority. So first off, there is the priority of who they want to attack, which is going to be the solo ninja first, then the archer, the hero, master, and finally the panda. And then there's also objectives that they're trying to meet. So as long as they can meet the objective highest on that track working their way down following the pr priorities of who they're trying to target so obviously the two over here my panda or the panda cannot get to so he's going to be working his way down that track also trying to meet those different priorities which his very first priority is to attack a enemy ninja that does not have a shield in place and that leaves him within the area of fog so currently these two are too far away, and the fog are these two lines here. So he wants to try to stay within those two lines if possible. Now, if he can't, then he'll move on to the second objective, which is simply to attack an enemy that or an enemy ninja that does not have a shield. Following again this priority. So in this situation, he can do that. So he's going to move one, two forward, as he's always going to move right next to the enemy that he's able to. And then he's going to attack in one direction. He can attack up to two spaces away, but he's going to attack in one direction. And it's going to be at the Hero Ninja. So at that point, the Hero Ninja is going to take two damage. And I can choose to use the Panda's ability. I'd have to spend one of my energy to do a Bear Hug, which would take the damage on the Panda instead of the Hero. But I think I'm going to go ahead and take it on the hero. I'm okay with that for now. So the hero is going to drop down to four hit points. From there, then, is going to be onto my player to defend, which I already took care of. And then my, my turn, or my part of the turn. So first off, there's going to be income, so I can choose to either gain an energy or to gain an item. I cannot do both. So with my character, I'm going to go ahead and try to gain an item and see what I get here. So it's an energy, so I gain an energy anyway. And then the next part is for movement, so I can move my characters around. So at this point, I know the fog is in these two sections, which means that the characters in those sections are going to reduce any damage they take by one. So I'm going to try to plan my turn out where that is not going to be the case. Then uh, I'm going to go ahead and go after this archer here. So I'm going to move up one with Solo as he has a pretty good attack, but it only attacks diagonally, so he wants to be there. And I'm going to move the panda up as well to support him so that if something happens, I can try to 
take the damage for him. Then I'm going to I have one move left as these one of each one of these used one. So I'm going to move the archer one space as well, keeping her with the panda. As they're the highest priority right now and they can be my biggest damage dealers, I don't want to lose them just yet. So from there, then we'll work our way down. The next is taking action. So I can do up to three actions, which includes using item cards that I have, or which obviously I would have done that during that section. So that would have been one of my actions. I can use abilities with the star on them. So Solo has the blink where he can trade places with an ally. So that would be considered an action and doing some other things. So I've done a couple of actions already. I don't really want to do anything else. So then finally I'm on to attacking. So I can do one single attack. So I'm going to go ahead and use solo against the archer. Hopefully bring her down. But we'll see. So with his attack it does not cost energy. And he's going to roll the main die. And determine if he can do enough damage. If he rolls a white symbol. Which is the, the main part of the background. Or a black. It's going to determine the amount of damage. White is going to do one, and black will do two. So hopefully we'll roll a black, but we'll find out here. It is a black, so that's two damage on her, and she does not have a fog token, so she has been eliminated with two damage. When that happens, I get to mark that I've killed a archer with that, and I'll get more points for that at the end of the game. As the more enemies I kill, I get points for every enemy that I kill. At that point, my attack is done, so then... We'll move on to the last step, which is if it's in a fog lane, it reduces one damage, which it was not. So that is it. And we're ready to start a new round. Now, with this one, I do have an, an enemy that I have to respawn. So I will roll the d4 and the s die to determine where she goes. So it is going to be a one white. So she's going to be up in here as this is the black lane and this is the white lane. So that's where she'll start now. At this point, then I'll go ahead and roll these again to determine what zombie activates and what my fog does. So I rolled a five. So the fog is going to move down to here. Number two, so it'll be the archer that's going to activate. And she rolled a white, so she's going to just do one damage and she has a range of three. So in order to do that, she's going to have to move one And again, she's not going to be able to get to either one of these. So she's going to have to go after the master. And she's only going to do one damage, so I'm going to go ahead and take that. Then it is on to my players again to choose what they want to do. Again, I'm going to go ahead and take an item. And it's a shield, so that's going to come in handy. That'll be good to have. Then it's on to movement, so I have to choose how I want to move. And... Hmm... I think I'm okay with where I'm at right now. I don't see a big benefit of moving. So from there, then I'm going to go ahead. I don't really, do I want to do any actions? I will do an action. I will go ahead and spend the shield and drop a new shield out. I'm going to place it here to help to hopefully defend some of those characters possibly. Then I will go ahead and attack. So. I'm going to go ahead and attack. I'm going to use a energy uh, with the legend to attack Panda. So with his first attack, he is can choose any direction to attack. So that's why I'm going to go after Panda. And it can do up to two damage if I roll a black background. So let's see what happens. There it is. Okay, so we got a black background. And then he also has a bonus with his rage, which if I can roll the purple three, then it adds an additional damage. So let's see if I get lucky with that. No. So it does two damage to Panda, so it's going to drop it by two as it is not in a fog lane at this point. The Panda is the hardest one to bring down, but he's worth the most points. And if I can kill one of each of the different zombie types, then I'm also going to get some bonus points. So that's very critical in trying to get the higher scores. So that's why I decided to go after him, and he's not in the fog lane. All right, so at this point, then again, we'll roll for the enemies. As we're going to go straight to step two. It is going to be the master that's going to attack. Fog is going to be at one, so we're up here. And 
he is going to do one damage to somebody. So he is going to move down one. He can attack in any direction. And so he's going to target the solo because he cannot get to the archer. Otherwise, she would have been the higher priority or objective as she is not in the lane with the shields. So he's going to go after solo and do one damage to him. So I'm going to spend one energy and soak that with the panda. All right, then it goes back to me. So I have to choose what I'm going to do. I will gain an energy. And then for movements, hmm, let's see. I will spend one to move here. I'm going to move her up one and actually I'm going to leave him there and I'm still pretty happy with where everything is so I think I'm good there I'm going to go ahead and shoot the archer at solo she can do between one and two damage but solo only has one hit point and he's not in those fog lanes so I'm not I don't even need to roll because I'm going to kill him no matter what so I'm going to remove him instead of even rolling and mark that on the board. From here I'm going to play a couple rounds off camera and then I'll be back to see how the ninja team is faring. Alright, so then back into the enemy's turn. It's going to be Solo again that's going to attack for one. And the fog is going to remain down here. So he is going to... One, two, three. Not going to be able to get there. And hero, one, two, three. So solo is going to... He'll move up here and attack the master. I'll go ahead and take that again. And then it's going to be back into my turn. So I'm going to gain an item. It's another shield. Man. All right. And then I have to decide what I'm going to do. Well, the master is going to take that opportunity and knock Solo out. So he doesn't even need the roll because he's going to do one damage no matter what. So Solo has been eliminated. And that'll be that. So then we'll bring him back in. He's coming in one black. Wow, that's not good. And then we'll determine who's going to activate. It's going to be the panda again doing one damage and it's still six for that so it's not going to change that at all panda is going to attack solo so with that i will spend one to take it on panda and then i have to go so those being down there let's see I'm going to go ahead and move here, and then I'm going to go ahead and attack him again. I don't need to roll because I'm going to kill him no matter what. So then this will flip over. So I've gotten three solos now, so that's good. Again, we'll bring him back out. And it's going to come out on two on white. All right, then we'll see what, this, what we're going to do. Fog is changing up to the top area now. And it is going to be the master that activates. So he's going to move up to getting into the fog and going after solo for one damage. I will go ahead and spend the shield to stop that. Again, I don't need the roll because he's only doing one damage. So I'm not worried about that. And then it's back to me. So I will gain an energy. And what do I want to do? With that, I will, hmm, kind of crammed up here, but I'm going to go with the master, and I'm going to move one, two, three, and I'll attack the archer. She only has one hit point, and she's not in fog, so she is going to be eliminated. I get to mark another one there. So then she'll come back out. And I do want to spend that shield so that I can keep this going, keep my defenses up. 
So she's going to come out on two black, which would normally push, but I can't push anymore. So I'm going to have to re-roll that. And it's going to be two black again. So same thing. Again, I'll have to re-roll. Four of black. All right, so she's down here, and she's back up to her starting hit points. All right, then we'll see who activates. It is going to be the master, and the fog is going to change to that. All right, and he's going to do one damage to solo again. <sighs> I'm going to use the shield. I still want to keep those going. He is in that fog, so he's good there. And it is over to my player all right so let's see what do i want to do everybody is in fog right now so i might want to pop that so i am going to gain an energy and let's see i will spend one to use this to eliminate that for the rounds opening that lane up so I can attack some things. And what do I want to do? I will move solo and I'm going to attack Panda. So come on solo. Ah, one more damage. All right. So then it is again back to them. And two it's going to bring that fog back up. Number three. So Master is going to activate again, doing a damage. So he is again going to move up and target solo. So do I deplete all of my shields? Or do I use my Panda's last ability? I'll go ahead and use an energy. Well, no, I'm going to use the shield. I'll keep solo around for another round and see what we can do here. All right, back over to my turn. I will gain an item. I get plus two to movement. And let's see. I'm going to go ahead and first for movements, I will... So we're getting kind of crammed in here. So what do I want to do? I'm going to move Panda. One, two, three. Well, do I don't really want to do that. Let's shift you up here. That's two. And I'll go ahead and spend this to move Panda here. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the ability to blink over with my solo and attack their solo, which is going to kill him instantly. And then I'll gain another token for that. Okay, so at this point, then again, we'll respawn him. He's coming in on two white. He likes that spot. And then he is going to activate... The fog is going to jump up here, so he's already in there, so he is going to attack solo. And at this point, I don't have anything to defend him, so he is going to go down. All right, so at this point, the enemy is targeting my, my hero. If my hero goes down, the game is over, so I have to be careful on what I do there. All right, so then it's back into my turn for, for this. So let's go ahead and gain an item. It is a shard, so first movement. I will do one, two, three, moving down there, and I will gain that there, and then I'm gonna use his ability right away to attack. And I'm gonna go after the archer. As she is not defended right now, it is two damage. I would roll for the rage, but two is enough to bring her down anyways. So that will make three on her. And then it is back to them. So spawning. 
she is going to come into four black so she is right back there apparently she is probably going to be the one that activates no it's going to be panda and number five so this is going to split and he is looking to do two damage and he is going to let's see getting there is going to expose him So, the better option is to move up and attack my master, bringing him down. And then it's back to me. So, everybody's in, in their defensive areas. So, I'm going to go ahead and gain an energy. And then what do I want to do? I will move up two and move Panda over one. And then I will go ahead and spend an energy to use that to destroy this. And then Panda will attack the other Panda, bringing him down one more point. All right, then it's back over to the enemy. Number, the Panda's going to activate again, doing a damage. He can get up here at my guy there. So he's going to attack him and do a damage to him. Back to me. Oh, and I forgot to put the fog down. So fog is going to split. That worked out for him. And with my my guys, I will I will gain that energy. And then movements. Let's go one. Two to go there. And then I'm going to spend two potions, that's two of my actions, to heal my hero back up a couple. Keep him around a little bit longer, hopefully. And then I will spend one energy to do an attack on the master. So let's see what I get. One damage, and do I get the bonus? I do not. So just one damage onto the master. All right, back to the enemies. It is going to be Panda again. This time this is going to drop down and he is just doing one damage. So again, he's going to drop down here and attack the hero. Nothing I can do about it. So then it's back to, to my turn. I will gain that energy and What do I want to do? My hero is in trouble. I need to I need to move. So I'm going to do one, two, three to move here. And then I'll attack their master with my hero. So it's going to spend an energy. It is two damage. And then do I get the third? Do I get lucky and rage on him? I do not. So just two, but that brings him down to one. So I'm working my way through some of these bigger, nastier enemies. All right, so then it is back over to their turn. The archer is going to go. She is doing two damage. So she's gonna move over and the fog is gonna change up here. There's no way she's getting into the fog. So she's gonna attack my hero for two. Brings him down to one damage left. Things are looking pretty rough for my guys. I was hoping to build up to do his big, powerful attack, but I think at this point I might need to start getting some shields. So during my turn, I'm going to gain an item. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and move down. One, two, three. I will spend two to gain a shield down here and spend one more to attack the archer. So let's see if I can finish her. Nope, that's one damage, but can I get the rage? No, I can't, so just one damage. All right, back to the zombies. It's gonna be the archer. She is looking to do one damage, and the fog is going to change to the bottom sections. So she's going to stay right there and target him. I have to spend the shield to save him. And then it's back into 
my turn. So at this point, I have to gain an energy. And I will spend that to destroy a shield. And then I will destroy this one and I'll attack the master, bringing him down. Gaining another one there. Then it is back to the enemy, so spawning the master. He is going to come out uh, down here. And unless something crazy happens, I think this might be game. It is going to be Panda for two damage. And the fog is going to change back to that. So he's just going to move down and take out my hero. All right, so at that point, then we would move into scoring. So first off, I would get any, I get one point for every energy and every item that I have. I don't have either right now, so I won't get any points there. I'm going to get one point for every hit point that is lost by the zombies that are currently out there. So right now the panda has taken three and the archer took one. So that'll give me four points for that. And then I get points for every zombie that I've killed. So I get two points for every solo. So I took out four of them. So I'm going to get eight points there. So I'll return a two and get 10 points for that. Then I get three points for every archer. And I killed three of those. So that's another nine points. So that's another 10 and one. Then I get five points for every master. And I did take out two masters. So I'm going to get 10 points for that. And I get eight points for every panda, and I took out one panda, so there's another five, six, and eight points. Plus, I get ten points for every complete set, so I was able to, to take out one complete set, so that's another ten there. So that's 40, 48, and 49 points. So then comparing those to the chart, as you guys can see here, for 49, that is a champion that falls between 40 and 54. So not bad. I almost was able to get to hero. I had the panda on the ropes. Maybe another round or two, I might be able to take that out, and that would have given me another complete set and really would have bumped me up on the points. But it still worked out, had a really good time. Hope this helps you guys in deciding whether or not you want to back this title on Kickstarter. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do appreciate it. I take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. If you found this video helpful, if you like what I do, please consider hitting that like button, subscribe to my channel. As it really does make a big difference, helps me to continue to grow and produce these videos. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.